Hello everyone and welcome to Cinderful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Black Library review. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of the many publications brought out by a Black Library and giving you our thoughts on the book, audio drama, whatever it happens to be. Now, I will say that we will try to keep this review to as spoiler free as possible, though there will obviously be points where we talk about things happening in the book. We will try to keep away from saying any of the major plot points so you can go and read this book for yourself. We'll just give you our thoughts on whether or not we think it is something you may be interested in. So we'll use this video to instruct you on maybe is this sort of going to be a book that you would like to see. With that all said and out the way, let's get cracking on. Let's talk a little bit about the book that we have reviewed this time. In today's Black Library review, we're going to be checking out Lords of Mars, the sequel to Priests of Mars, which we've already done a review for on the channel. You can go check that out. We'll put it up the top of the video around here. Um, by Graham McNeil. Now, this is the second book in a row. We've done a review from Graham McNeil. We just finished Storm of Iron as well. Fantastic old story. I absolutely loved reading um, and listening to once again. But this one I haven't listened to. And this has been on my desk for a while, uh, one to get to. Um, I've read Priest of Mars. I really enjoyed Priest of Mars. So really looking forward to talking about this one as well. Now, this is narrated by Joe Jameson, the same narrator for Priest of Mars, which is cool. I like it when they continue to use the same narrator, especially in more shorter series. You know, when something changes, maybe over something like Gotrek Gurness's time, you can forgive it because there is a rather long ongoing saga. But especially when it's like two books like this or two or three, you like to see the same people narrating it. It really does, you know, enable you to... Um, follow along and realize the different characters within the story but this was um the second one in the story so let's get cracking on into the review proper and so our story as i said this is the sequel so definitely you want to go read priest of mars so you get a lot of what is happening in this story this is definitely not uh set too far after in fact it's pretty much set directly after the first book so you definitely want to read priest of mars first but this one has them being pursued by the vengeful elder which we've seen in the first story um major kotov's explorator amada they are heading into the newly revealed space uh far beyond all the dangerous things they've uh, had to go through to get there in pursuit of ancient secrets from a former majors and as the Adeptus Mechanicus and indeed the Black Templar allies, they have um, tackle the twin threats of the Vengeful Aliens and even some insurrection aboard the fleet in some quite really interesting uh, and intriguing ways, a greater danger will reveal itself in due time. And in fact, many greater dangers will. There are quite a few things that are not going friendly in this book for the forces of the Imperium. So what is this book's purpose? And like, I guess, A Priest of Mars, this continues to show us the same sort of things and really uh, has that same purpose of doing that as well as that that first book did. We get a really nice in-depth look at the Adeptus Mechanicus, especially seeing how, you know, an explorator feat works at such a nice ground level, showing us the lives of not just the Magos, but also, I guess, lesser, higher ranking tech priests, tech engineers, uh, also, you know, the people that work for the mechanicals that aren't actually i guess uh tech in any way you know the mortal servants if you would we also get a really cool look at many of the other imperial forces in the story like we have rogue traders the marines from the black templars really nice look at sort of a um emperor's champion in there and even we get a look at some titan legions as well and some other sort of uh different parts of the imperium in it and i think this is just really a nice ground level showing especially more so than anything how the road traders marines and the titans all sort of interact with the magoses of the adeptus mechanicus which i think is a really nice look at how those relationships work and so our main characters in this one now we do sort of lose a couple of main characters over the course of the first book that you'll of course know about but we also do sort of push maybe a couple to the side as well uh, and this one generally focuses i think on arch magos Alexel kotov and rogue trader rebute Serkov more than anything um I think these two, more than anything, really focus on the story. We may have opposition to them, but I don't think they are main characters in some of the other ways. We definitely have, you know, a lot of very strong secondary characters in the Black Templars, the uh, onboard rebels, and indeed some of Rebute's crew as well. Um, but 
I think these two characters really are the center of attention with Eden at Lords of Mars, which makes for a really interesting reading. We've obviously got the Archimagos and then the Rogue Trader, who's not got a writ of passage, uh, that, you know, is working alongside him. And so what does change about these main characters over the course of the story? Uh, Archimedes continues to, I guess, generally evolve his character, and we get to see more of him. He really does, I guess, become less human the more we learn about him. You know, he really did seem in the first book as an interesting uh, Adeptus Mechanicus sort of worker. Um, you know, maybe he was a little different, but definitely, I think, over the course of this story, we learn he is very cold-hearted. Uh, he is very... Uh, sort of strict and we learn you know he is pretty much just like all the rest um, even though maybe he sort of seemed he's a little bit radical I guess you could say a little bit almost heretical in some of the things he does but he is really interesting Rebute for his time um, we learn you know this I think is a real human connection within the story more than any of the others we're not sort of looking at slaves in this point like we're looking at a free man within this story and I think he is quite easily the most relatable of all the characters um, you can sort of understand his situation He's just eager to explore, which, you know, I think most of us would be in a galaxy out there would be quite eager to explore and want to do that and want to, you know, sort of make a name for ourselves. And that's generally Rebute. And we generally see a lot of those things sort of pushed to the fore. Like, he definitely, uh, I guess, coins on to a lot of the goings on. Uh, and he becomes a little bit wiser about this whole journey, I think, over the course of the story. So what does the book do well? I think more than anything, there are really strong characters within this story. Every single one of the main sort of characters, and even the secondary characters, I think are really well defined. You can instantly sort of get the idea. You're not sort of left wondering why is this character doing this or that in the story. You can sort of tell where most of the characters' stories are going to go. Not directly, but you can guess what they're maybe going to do. You might not be able to guess the outcome of what their actions are going to, I guess, cause, but you definitely know that you know, this character, I can sense he's going to do something aggressive because he is an aggressive character. This dude, this character is going to do something, um, I guess, silly or stupid because he's not the brightest of characters or he's quite rash. Um, and this leads to, you know, really good motives behind those characters of having, you know, strong characters and really allows you to invest in the story well and, and gives you, you know, the ability to actually care about the characters, which is really nice. Like, it's nice to read, connect and feel and want to see a good outcome for at least many of the characters or maybe a bad outcome for particular ones. And so, who would like this book? I think, obviously, Adeptus Mechanicus fans, if you like the Adeptus Mechanicus in this, this is definitely a story for you. It's got a really good look into it. But I will say this, over the first one, I think this book, more than Priest of Mars, definitely has a uh, broader range of appeal. I think this could be, you know, almost space adventure in sort of the way. Well, the first one is really setting up the space adventure, so a lot of it is Adeptus Mechanicus focused uh, and very, you know, binaric and very sort of monotone in those character relations and stuff i think this one more so you're definitely going to be able to find more people would probably enjoy this book than the first one but the first one that's not taking anything away from the first one i think it does a really great job for adeptus mechanicus fans i think this just has a wider audience that anyone that enjoys a good space adventure would enjoy this book and so if you can get through priest of mars i think you would really enjoy this as a general sort of book for anyone into 40k or indeed you know anyone into a good sci-fi story and so, in summary, this was a really good story. Like, it leaves you wanting more, and I'm really looking forward to what's next. I know there's uh, Gods of Mars, which is the third in the series, uh, which I'll really be looking forward to. That hasn't hit audio yet, so... Um, but, you know, I've got that waiting there for when it comes out. That'll definitely get listened to straight away. Hopefully, that's not too far away. Um, but this was really fun. Um, I probably like Lords of Mars better than I did Priest of Mars, I would say. I think this is probably my favourite out of the two so far. Um, and so, definitely 8 out of 10, like, really good story. This is, for me, yeah, my favourite out of the two, I think. Um, what did you think if you've listened to both of them? Let us know what you thought down in the comments below. And so that is the end of the video. We hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our cool little community here at Sinful Gaming, you can do so in our Discord server, which is linked down in the video's description. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so either by joining our Patreon or YouTube members, both of which are linked in the video's description, or going over to our channel merch store and grabbing some channel merch for yourself.
We like to give our Patreons and YouTube members a special shout out for helping support the channel and allowing us to keep doing what we're doing. So a special thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lowe, Outer and Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Derek and Bloobs, and to our YouTube members as well, Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny 84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, John Castle and Davis Weir. And a special thank you to Lady Witchfox R at the end here because she does all the amazing artwork for the channel. It looks stunning. With that said, thank you all for watching once again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the great. Ciao for now.